We should drop. All right. So let's talk a little bit about our V2 operator interface. You know the the, the most uh, you know the most important icon inside the Fire Pump controller, inside the Tornatec Fire Pump controller, which is our V2 operator interface. It comes with a seven-inch color graphic display, it has on-screen menus with intuitive icons. Uh, it has a USB port cover, um, which gives it a NEMA four rating. So even though your enclosure is still NEMA two as a standard, the actual display itself is a NEMA four. Right. So it's watertight protection. Well, obviously, we don't want to provide a display that, will, that can get damaged by water. It has an integrated touchscreen protector, so a plastic protected, protected, protected from any damages. It comes with a powerful CPU. It has the option, you have the choice of selecting multiple languages directly on a display. Uh, and of course, we provide a Modbus through TCPIP. So in addition to those standard BMS alarm contacts, which I showed you before, we also provide Mod, Modbus through TCPIP. So this is what the home screen looks like. So it's very easy, very, very easy to use, very intuitive. So on the left-hand side, you have your um, your voltage, your three-phase voltage. If you have 380 volts, 400, 415, depending, depending on the site, 220, depending on the site requirements, you have your three-phase amperage, and then you have your motor status. So the motor will change state when the motor is running. Um, on the top right-hand right -hand side, you have your date and time. And you have a temperature of the pump room. So the display itself also comes with a thermal couple on the, on the front of the display, which will actually um, show the actual temperature of the pump room, right? So you actually have a temperature temperature reading in the pump room. Uh, as many of you know, our controllers are certified up to 55 degrees, um, you know, but if uh, in certain areas, this type of temperature can reach even higher. So it's very important that, that the temperature is monitored. On the bottom right hand side, you have your, your gauge. As I mentioned before, it's set from zero to 300 for the accuracy purposes, and you have your system pressure display. So right now we have 167 PSI. We have your cut in set to 140, and your cutout is set to 150 PSI. So that is where you'll see your cut in and cut out. On the bottom, bottom hand side of your controller, you have your automatic controller. So this is an FM requirement. So the FM requires us to show if the controller is set to automatic. For automatic. And then the second thing is, is that it's set. To it's set to pressure actuated. So as I mentioned earlier, we have different methods of starting the fire pump, right? Whether it's manual, automatic, this and that, which are allowed by an FPA. But an FM wants to make sure that the user sees the type of starter that the controller is using. That's why you have those indications of automatic controller and pressure actuated. And the third one on the right-hand side, bottom right-hand side is the automatic shutdown. So if your controller is set to manual shutdown, it will show manual. If your controller is set to automatic shutdown, it will show automatic shutdown. Right, that's where your 10 minutes comes in. Now, if you have an automatic power transfer switch, you'll also have the voltage of the generator showing on the display. So on the bottom left-hand side, you'll see you'll have the voltage of the generator. As you can see, there's an additional uh, the line of voltage. So the, the, the voltage on the right-hand side, just uh, on the right, uh, just next to the motor status, next to the M, is the voltage after the transfer switch. So this makes sure that there's no issues with the transfer switch and no voltage drop between the actual incoming power and after the transfer switch. So as I mentioned before, just in more details, is you have your pressure or non-pressure non actuated, your automatic, non-automatic, and your automatic or manual shutdown. So now let's talk about uh, the on-screen menus. So the on-screen menus on the controller are very important. So they're there to, uh, you know, that's where you're going to you're going to navigate and change any settings and functions on the controller. So we'll start with the home page. So the, of course, going back to the home page, so your home page will always take you back to the main screen. The next one is your alarms. So if you click on the if you press on the alarms button, it'll take you directly to alarms. So if there, if there are any alarms that are active or alarms that have occurred before, you'll see them directly on the alarms page. So this is where you can see the time and date when things happen, if things are still active, like an overvoltage, a pump room alarm, anything that is happening in the pump room, which uh, which you can see directly uh, in more detail in the alarms page. There is a reset button. So if alarms have been reset, you can clear them. Now you're not clearing them from the logs, you're just clearing them from the alarms page. Okay, and you can also do the bell test using the bell test button in this section. The configuration page is the page where you're going to change all your settings. This is where you're going to do your, your commissioning, your startups. Um, 
you have your different uh, settings for pressure. So you can change it from PSI to bar. Uh, you can change it from PSI or to KPA, depending on the type of uh, readings you'd like to see on the display. You can adjust your maximum pressure if you need to. You set your cut in and cut out. Uh, you can activate your periodic test if it's required. You can adjust the timer on the run test if it's required. And then you can activate the automatic shutdown if it's authorized by the authority having jurisdiction. And that, I guess, as I said, is a 10 minute requirement, which is also adjustable. You adjust your date and time, and then you have your advanced section, which is more for, uh, for calibrations and different troubleshooting uh, uh, pages. Stay tuned for more webinars to talk about the different uh, advanced section. And of course, the most important thing is that it's password protected. So you have your user login on the bottom. The next page is your history page. So this is where you're going to get all your information about the fire pump controller. So the events, first of all, so you view the events, you can see the pressure curves. So it's, uh, it's either done through a table, through a graphic, you have the power curves, so you've seen the fluctuations in the voltage. So the main, main reason for the history, and I think is very important, is for two things. Maintenance, right? If you're doing maintenance on a uh, yearly maintenance or monthly maintenance, depending on the contract or what you're doing, you can view different th things that ha are happening in the pump room. And the second thing is if something happens in the pump room, if you have any damages or if, or if anything happens, the, the history information in the control will give you a lot of information um, about what happened in the controller. It also provides us with a lot of information for our service departments, for Tornatec service departments, in order to troubleshoot any controller issues, any pump room issues that may have occurred. So it's very, very, very important that anytime you go to a fire pump room and that you need to provide uh, technical information to Tornatec, uh, to our service departments, that you download the logs. And that is where you find it in this section in the history page. So you have the saved logs, the fourth one, Saved logs is where you can go back and view logs uh, from before, obviously, from previous months. So the controller will actually create files based on the month, and you can actually see them directly on the display. And the fifth one is the pump curves. The pump curves is, is one that uh, not a lot of people use, but it's, I encourage people to use it, is that if you, you can take the actual pump curve that you receive from the factory, and you can actually input those, that information into the controller, and it'll actually save the curve directly on the display. So they have the matching pump curve to that fire bulb itself. Uh, and, as, and you can actually in, input multiple, you can multi, do multiple pump curves on the controller. Again, stay tuned for our, our, our uh, commissioning and troubleshooting webinars. We'll, we'll go through these uh, in more details. Uh, you have statistics. So this will give you information like how long the controller has been on, uh, how long it's been running, things like that. And of course, your download page. And in your download page, you can download the manual which will give you and the drawings, which will be in PDF format. And the logs and events and information will be in CSV, and Excel, which can be read um, through Excel quite easily. Now we've also added a service page. So we've not added, but we have a service page. So the service page itself is what will give you the information on where to contact Tornatec. It will give you the date and time of the commissioning date. So as many of you know, when you're doing a commissioning, there's a checklist and then, then there's a there's a done button which you have to press. Once you press that done button, it'll actually give you the uh, the date and time of when that service is done. It's very important because the commissioning date is based on the warranty for a lot of for a lot of places for for a lot of you in your regions. You base your commit your warranties based on the commissioning date, not actually the actual <laughs> delivery date. Um, it'll give you the last service date. Uh, you can also program a service interval, so you can program six months, every one year, every two years. That'll activate an alarm to require service uh, information. A service required. Now on the bottom side, you can, as you can see, you have the jockey pump cut in and cut out information. So this is where you can actually set the jockey pump. You're not actually setting the jockey controller cut in, cut out. You're telling the electric fire pump controller what the value is for the jockey can jockey cut in and cut out. So by having that, they're able to actually the controller is able to see as the pressure goes up and down if the if it is a jockey pump start or stop. And the next one, of course, is your languages. So the controller comes with multiple languages, and I think it's over 20 languages directly on the display, which can be changed by the user. 